McCarran Field was dedicated December 19, 1948. The site, a privately run airfield from 1943 until 1948, was newly named for Senator Pat McCarran, an aviation advocate who sponsored numerous laws concerning the early commercial aviation industry. When McCarran Field was transferred to county ownership, it served four airlines, Bonanza, Western, United, and TWA, and averaged just 12 flights a day. In the 1950s, Las Vegas hadn't yet grown up around the airport. By 1959, the number of daily flights at McCarran had increased to 73, with an average of 2,629 passengers a day. In the 1950s, the community is growing, the strip is growing, the airport planners are looking at, can we grow on the Las Vegas side or are we going to jump the field? And so they decide they are going to jump the field, build on Paradise Road. It was interesting, the media here thinks this is a terrible idea. It's called a white elephant basking in the desert sun. And yet, within just a couple of years, we have to already start planning again for the future. With passenger numbers on the rise, the 1960s saw the opening of a new terminal. In 1963, daily flights increased to 128 with nearly 49,000 passengers a day. By 1968, annual passenger volume grew to 3.5 million. And while scheduled international flights wouldn't become a major part of operations for several years, the airport's name was officially changed to McCarran International Airport. We pride ourselves on being an international airport, again, because we want the world to come here. And what we've learned is the world does want to come here. In the early 1970s, construction began on the A and B gates to accommodate increased traffic. 1972 saw McCarran as the 22nd busiest airport in the U.S. with 4.6 million annual passengers. It was a time before the age of personal private jets when everyone who flew to and from Las Vegas could be seen at McCarran Karen, even celebrities. Because nobody had the private jets. That was not a big deal. I remember Lonnie Anderson coming in. She had, you know, sunglasses on, trying to disguise herself. And it was just a day back then, you know, when there's Tom Selleck. Or, you know, hey, there's Burt Reynolds. In 1978, the Clark County Board of Commissioners adopted the ambitious McCarran 2000 expansion plan. Among other things, the plan called for construction of new gates and a parking garage, as well as expanded baggage claim facilities. Over the years, the airport has been home to a variety of shops, restaurants, and bars. They had a cafeteria. They had a small bar. Later on, they changed that to Cheers Bar, and they had these dummies sitting there that looked just exactly like that guy Norm. And everybody thought that was real people sitting there. By 1982, annual passenger volume was more than 9.4 million. As McCarran raced to keep up, work on expansion projects and airport amenities continued. But as a kid, uh, we used to drive out to uh, park at the end of, uh, well, it isn't Eastern because the airport didn't go that far out. Whatever road was shorter than that, and we used to park in, at the end of the fence and watch the airplanes land. That was pretty cool. Lots of people did that. So when we constructed the southernmost runway, we uh, put that viewing area in over on Sunset. And the only mistake we made was not making it bigger because it is really popular. In 1987, the McCarran 2000 expansion was complete and the airport's commitment to the future of the community was apparent. The $300 million project quadrupled the size of the original terminal and added the Seagate satellite concourse. With traffic increasing at McCarran, the county purchased a general aviation airport in North Las Vegas. It would eventually become the second busiest airport in Nevada. In the 90s, a new decade and consistent growth in the number of travelers using the airport meant it was time for another terminal. The Charter International Terminal, later called Terminal 2, opened in 1991. By 1996, McCarran was North America's 10th busiest airport. Now we have the vision 2020, which will, take, will guide us to what we're going to do for the next 20 years. You know, it's funny because I recall when working at the airport, there was this McCarran 2020 plan, and that was actually the capital plan, and what McCarran would look like in 2020, and here we are today in 2018. It, you know, and some of the other things that are interesting is, you know, we always talked about the McCarran mauve. You know, that was the color of, <laughs> at the time, you know, our uniforms were McCarran mauve. <laughs> As the 90s drew to a close, Las Vegas continued to draw tens of millions of visitors each year, and the airport evolved along with the community with yet another addition, the D concourse. To see it being built each leg, I mean, it was again, it was just every time we watched it, we said, here's another piece of history. To see the land before it was a structure, and to see the changes over the years and the technology, and it was just amazing. The new millennium brought challenges, but the team at McCarran faced them head on. 
the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001 devastated the nation and temporarily halted air travel. It was a game changer. I mean, it changed the air airport environment forever. I was actually in, in Montreal uh, at an annual airport conference. We were all stranded. We couldn't get out of Montreal. So Rosemary was back here with the staff uh, taking care of what needed to be taken care of. I, I'm proud to say that she and her team were the first airport in the United States to get recertified to open back up. They did a fantastic job. Security concerns changed the way people traveled, resulting in the creation of the TSA and new methods of passenger screening. With all the changes, McCarran remained committed to top-notch customer service. Through technology and innovation, in 2003, McCarran became the first U.S. airport to install speed check kiosks, allowing customers to print a boarding pass from multiple locations throughout the airport. In 2005, with nearly 44.3 million travelers passing through, the northeast wing of the D concourse was completed, adding 11 new gates. Also in 2005, McCarran debuted the largest free airport Wi-Fi system in the U.S. Wireless was something that our passengers were then, more than a decade ago, and are still very, very excited about them. And we really led the world in helping to establish the common use kiosk. And that means that any airline can use any ticket counter or any gate position. And all to the benefit ultimately of our customers. 2007 was a record year with 47.7 million arriving and departing passengers. In April 2007, McCarran's Consolidated Rent-A-Car Center opened. The key thing that has happened in the time that I've been here has to do with consolidation. And my best memory of the airport has to do with just the opportunities. Uh, this is probably my eighth position since I started in the beginning, and I was a temp when I first started. So the thing that gets me excited is the fact that I know that the airport rewards effort. In 2008, to keep up with increasing passenger numbers, the airport debuted the Sea Annex Security Checkpoint and the Northwest Wing of the D Concourse. One, two, three. Looking forward, never back, McCarran saw the future of this community. In 2012, Terminal 3 opened with 14 gates. Yo, so Las Vegas. 2017, an underground tunnel connecting the D gates to T3's Customs Hall allowed for twice as many international gates. Recent improvements in Terminal 1 ticketing and baggage claim demonstrate the continued commitment to the future of this airport and this community. We are truly the gateway to Las Vegas. Um, the airport has grown a lot. I started in 91, and so Terminal 3 was really probably that defining moment for me that, wow, this is, we're really getting big, you know. McCarran's transformation continues. Its growth and success over the last 70 years wouldn't have been possible without committed employees, bold decision makers, and a unique destination designed to entice travelers to return year after year. The airport here in Las Vegas is part of the community. We're part of that economic engine. We can make a difference. As the gateway to Southern Nevada, McCarran will continue its commitment to passengers, employees, and the community, all while constantly evolving to remain a world-class transportation hub.